they're going to learn how to debunk some common misconceptions people still believe. So, let's get straight to it. The Observer Creates Reality this misconception mainly comes from the double slit experiment, but the point behind that experiment is actually to observe the wave particle nature of light. In the quantum world, to observe a particle is the same as to measure it, but to do that, you necessarily have to interfere with the particle. So the big misunderstanding here is caused by two main things, the terminology, and the way the experiment is often explained in a sensationalist, sometimes almost mystical way. In practice, the observer is nothing more than the thing that interferes with the system. It doesn't matter if it's a living being or a machine shooting photons to measure particles. When there's no measurement, meaning no interference, the particle in superposition passes through the slits as a wave. That wave interferes with itself, creating what's called an interference pattern. In some areas, the waves add up. In others, they cancel out, creating that weird looking pattern on the screen. Almost like the particle didn't go where it was supposed to. But the more particles you shoot, the more it becomes clear that there's order in the system, not magic making things random. On the other hand, if there is measurement, meaning some interference before or after the particle passes through the slits, it loses its superposition and stops behaving like a wave. It acts like a classical particle instead, creating a more intuitive pattern on the screen. So no, the observer did not create anything. They just interfered with the system, and that affected the result. And again, it doesn't matter who or what the observer is. It could be a machine, a beam of photons, or even a quantum kitty giving quantum licks near the slit. Doesn't matter if its eyes are open or closed. If it interferes enough to knock the particle out of superposition, boom, it's the observer. If we were to fix the famous phrase, the observer creates reality, the more accurate version would be, the interferer interferes with reality. Which kind of makes a lot more sense, right? Free will doesn't exist. This idea has been floating around since the 1980s after neuroscientist Benjamin Libet ran an experiment. He found that the brain shows signs of decision making milliseconds before you consciously choose to do something. And then a bunch of people went, ha, see, we're just puppets. But slow down determinism fans. First, Libet's experiment only showed brain activity before simple motor actions, like moving your wrist. That doesn't prove you don't have control over complex decisions like texting your ex. Second, your brain is part of you. If your brain decides before you, guess what? It's still you making the decision. Free will isn't spontaneous randomness. It's about having autonomy within your own system. And honestly, we don't even fully agree on what free will really means. Third, Labette also proposed the idea of a veto power. Basically, the conscious ability to stop an action before it happens. For example, not breaking your diet. Even if your brain is flashing signals to devour a giant bacon cheeseburger. The real problem is that some people use this 1980s experiment in a sensationalist way to claim we don't have autonomy. Or worse, they treat philosophy like science and say things like, well, if we don't have free will, no one's really responsible for anything, right? It was just the brain deciding. As if the brain is some mystical spirit floating around outside your head. Your brain is part of who you are. You made the decision. So don't blame your brain for bad decisions like it's some mystical entity. It's you, too. Weight and mass are the same thing. They're cousins, not twins. Mass is the amount of matter you have. It doesn't change unless someone slices you in half. Weight is the force your mass feels due to gravity. That's why you weigh less on the moon, but your mass stays exactly the same. If you take a scale to space and float over it, it's not going to show zero kilos because you've transcended matter. It's showing zero because there's no gravitational pull acting on you. Some people think that once you touch the ground, mass transforms into weight. Like they're the same thing in different states. But no, weight doesn't come from mass transforming. Weight is a consequence of mass being pulled by gravity. 